Right, today's video is going to be on pricing and one way of calculating the minimum amount you'd have to charge uh, when you sell your pieces. So I've done, this is based on a blog post I did a while ago um, and I have done a video on it before but both the blog post and the video um, are from a couple of years ago so probably uh, there's a decent number of you that won't have seen either. So I was talking about it on Instagram the other day thought I should do a quick video on here to kind of explain it. Um, all of this is in the blog post and there's a spreadsheet in the blog post too to calculate the numbers for you. So in a lot of ways it would be better to check that out but I thought I might as well. I'm going to throw some mugs and I'm going to talk through what the spreadsheet calculates and sort of the logic behind it. So that if you do go on to use the spreadsheet you don't need to read the blog post to find out exactly what I'm talking about and um, hopefully this will all make sense to you. So my way of working out uh, prices, this isn't necessarily how much you should charge so much as the, the minimum you'd need to charge but um, it, you can use it to calculate both, um, was basically worked out on the two variables that matter to a potter. So what I looked at was the amount of time I had and the amount of space I had in the kiln. And the reason that those are the two main ones is those will be the, the limits to how much work you can make to sell. So you can throw a certain amount of pieces uh, based on the amount of time you have, what well, throw and glaze and you know, so all the parts of the process need time and then everything you make needs to be fired. So, um, for some pieces, it'll be quite obvious, but actually, each piece has its own balance of those two variables. And different pieces will have the limit in different places. So what you need to know in order to um, use the spreadsheet is how much money you want a month. So, the way I did it is for that minimum pricing and also ideal pricing, there are two numbers that you'd want, which is um, the minimum amount of money you need a month, as in to pay rent, to pay your bills, to just carry on existing, um, not including material costs, because the spreadsheet will factor those in. I'll be ignoring them in the examples I use here because actually for pottery, they don't tend to be that significant but you know you need to know that number and the other number is um, how much money you'd like to make a month so to be comfortable to have spending money and so on and so forth um, how many hours you want to work a month and working in this case means kind of hands-on work so everything from wedging the clay through to sanding a piece and shipping it but not social media time, email time, and so on. Um, and then the last thing is how many firings you would do a month. And then you would go through, once you've got those numbers, for each piece you wanted to price and compare, you would have to know, oh, and um, for the spreadsheet as well, you'd also input your clay costs and glaze costs. But as I say, I mean, they don't tend to add that much but uh, it lets you calculate it. I'm not going to use them for this example. Um, and then you, for each piece, you would want the weight of clay, weight of glaze, which is generally around 10 to 20%, but you can get that from weighing a piece before and after you glaze it. Just gives you a way of calculating how much glaze you've actually put on it. And then the most important thing is how much time it takes you to, well, two most important things how much time it takes you to make that piece. And it's worth having a good idea of this anyway, even if you don't do the spreadsheet, um, because it's very hard to gauge just by thinking about it. You really want to go through a process with a mug and have a stopwatch every time you have hands-on time with it. Because you can ballpark it, but there are lots of small processes that you'd have to account for. So the spreadsheet, I think I did two versions, one that just lets you input a time so you can guess, and then another one where it's got all the processes broken down, which 
will probably make you think a bit harder, like how long does it take you to wedge clay from one piece? How long does it take you to load one piece in a kiln? For those numbers, I'd time yourself to wedge clay for 10 pieces and then divide by 10, time yourself to load a kiln and then divide it by however many pieces go into it. Um, because they're not insignificant amount of time. You probably spend as long loading the kiln, if not longer, um, as throwing for any given piece, or at least for small pieces, like a mug. There's a couple of minutes of kiln loading in there. So actually the throwing time is, is a very small part of it. So you want to know your, your total hands-on time for each piece and how many you could get in a kiln if that's all you were loading. And when I say kiln, I mean whatever kiln you're using, um, whatever you, kiln you use for the calculation of how many firings you're going to do a month. Um, and to a certain extent this number isn't going to represent the truth of it because you can pack things better, like there are some things that you can't quite fit two of on a shelf, which means you're getting one per shelf, but there's a lot of space you could fill around it. But just for the, the purposes of the spreadsheet, you're working out essentially what the absolute minimum you could charge for that piece and make the money you need. And so it doesn't factor that in. It's just, if, you're, if you were only making those pieces, how much would you have to charge to cover your bills? So it doesn't matter that there's space left around it because if you were only making those pieces, you wouldn't be able to fill it. So that's the logic. And then with all of those numbers, what you're basically looking to do is figure out what price you'd have to charge each month. So using two examples that are sort of um, opposites in terms of where their limits are, we'll go with a mug. So a small mug might have a hands-on time from kind of wedging the clay through to packing it of an hour, say. Um, realistically, I think it might actually be more than that, but an hour is nice and convenient. And say you wanted to work 150 hours a month. So, you know, it's not quite a full working week spent on the mechanical processes of throwing, but most of full working weeks spent on it. So there's a decent amount of hours. 150 hours, an hour per mug, you can make 150 bucks. If you wanted to make 3,000 pounds over the course of a mug, you'd have, uh, course of a month, you'd have to charge 20 pounds a mug. So, nice and straightforward. You can only make 150 mugs. In order to make 3,000 pounds, you divide 3,000 pounds by 150 mugs, 20 pounds a mug. You can load 50 of them into your kiln and you're gonna do 10 glaze firings a month. You can fire 500 of them a month, um, that would mean you could get away with charging six pounds a mug. Obviously, as I said, this doesn't take into account the material costs, but um, the spreadsheet will. It's just simpler this way. Um, but you can't get away with charging six pounds a mug because even though you can fire 500 of them, you can't throw 500 of them. You can only throw 150, so you have to charge 20 pounds at an absolute minimum because if all you were making was mugs and if you need £3,000 a month to pay your bills, charging £6 a mug or charging anything under £20 a mug will mean that you can't pay your bills that month um, if all you were making was mugs. So if you've got a wholesale order and they said we want to pay you £15 a mug, you would use a spreadsheet and unless there was a very good reason why you knew that you could, it would actually be profitable to do it. It's not worth your time. You can, after you've spent a month making the mugs for this whole wholesale order, you're not making enough money on it, each of them to pay your bills. Um, if you're going to fill your kiln mostly with uh, higher priced items and you want to just use the rest of the space for a wholesale order, that's an argument for doing it. But generally speaking, you want to be aiming to at least meet the minimum because um, otherwise you could spend a whole month on that project at that price uh, and then you wouldn't be able to eat.
So that's how mugs stack up. 20 pounds a mug based on the fact you can only throw 150 of them even though there's room to fire 500. Now, the exact opposite problem happens if you look at something like large fruit bowls. So if you have a large undecorated fruit bowl, that might realistically take you 45 minutes to throw. <coughs> so 150 hours a month, you can make 200 of them a month. So you can actually get away with charging 15 pounds for them, slightly less than the mugs, because they take less time. Um, and that gets you your 3,000, because you're making 200 a month, 200 times 15, 3,000. Uh, the problem is that big fruit bowls take up a whole shelf on the kiln. You can only fit three shelves in with a fruit bowl on it. So you can only fit three in per firing. You're doing 10 firings a month, you can make 30. Now, if you can make 30 of them and you want to make 3,000 pounds a month, you have to charge 100 pounds for the, the fruit bowl. So what you've got is a mug that in theory you could charge six pounds for based on capacity and a bowl that you have to charge 100 pounds for on capacity and a mug that you've got to charge 20 pounds for on time and a fruit bowl that you could charge 15 pounds for on time. And so what you see there is how the two factors affect the price differently depending on what the piece is. Um, it lets you see where your limits are on the pieces that you can sell and gives you a good basis on understanding where you're missing out. So if you have plenty of time but you fire in a studio um, and you only have access to the kiln once or twice a month and you can't fit that many pieces in, you want to be making <coughs> small high value items, so ornate mugs um, or little pipes or something like that that you you can they're very compact and you can charge a decent amount for. You don't want to be making big pieces because realistically when you put those numbers into the calculator it will say you've got to charge a thousand pounds for a bowl. If you can charge a thousand pounds for a bowl go for it but if you can't you'd be better off making small things. And on the inverse of that, you're doing it part-time, but you have a big kiln and you can fire from home, so you could fire you know, 20 times a month if you wanted, then you will find that you can charge a lot less for something like a fruit bowl because you can make and fire a lot of them. So in order to make the amount of money that you need to make a month, um, you know, you're limited on time, you don't want to spend too long on a piece because you'd have to charge that out at a rate that most people wouldn't pay. But you can actually make a lot of big pieces that are quite simple and people would be ha happy to pay you know, 50 to 100 pounds for a bowl. Whereas if you said, well, I can only make three mugs, so I've got to charge 200 pounds for a mug, they're not going to pay it. So it lets you see where your personal limits are because those numbers will be different for each person's situation whether you're limited on time or whether you're limited on kiln space and how long each piece makes you takes for you to make because again that will be different from each person each set of processes so you look at those two numbers and it gives you a sense of where your limits are and how much you'd have to charge for each price and um, what mix of things you want because that is the next part is that actually one of the limitations of this system is that you wouldn't be only firing one type of piece. You would um, fire a mix of sizes normally. Most people make a mix of different things, so you'd make some mugs, some bowls. So actually you can charge, you don't have to charge the higher number if you're doing a mix. If you did half bowls, half mugs, then you could meet somewhere in the middle. Although I still think um, the lower, the, the number on the amount you need to make as a minimum is probably still a good minimum to use even if technically you can get away under it. Um, you don't really want to be underpricing yourself but the nice thing with this is it gives you a sense of whether or not you are undervaluing 
And if you put your prices up because of this spreadsheet, you know you're doing it because you need to in order to pay the bills, rather than just because you're <coughs> price gouging your customers. So it kind of gives you that, that clarity if people ever question your prices to say, actually, now I know for well that this is, a, this is the right price to charge because you've got the numbers to back it up. So quite handy in that sense. Um, yeah, the, it doesn't factor everything in the spreadsheet, factors more parts in like the cost, but um, it's not a huge amount. This clay is, I think this would be about 15p's worth of clay. The guys will probably be another 15p. The firing might add the, enough to take it up to a pound, all told. So for each mug, you might have to add a pound's worth of material costs and a couple of pounds worth of material costs for a bowl. But um, the largest part by far is your time. And the nice thing with this, I had a few questions on Instagram about how do you factor in time for social media and documenting the process and emailing customers and all the testing that has to go in before the piece is ready. You don't have to factor that in. This system, by only, so long as you, you're realistic with your numbers, so realistically how long each piece takes you and realistically how much time you will spend making the pieces that you're going to sell, it doesn't matter what you do in the rest of your time. So you could spend half a month making pieces and you could spend the other half of the month learning to juggle or doing glaze tests. But the price that you have to charge for each mug, because you made the same amount in either month, is exactly the same. So in order to pay your bills, you have to charge a certain amount per mug based on how many mugs you're gonna make. Um, doesn't matter what you spend the rest of your time doing. All that matters is that the numbers that you input are actually realistic. Um, this is quite convenient because the amount of time you'll spend on other things depends, like it, that will vary more per month, but you, you have a good sense of how many things you need to make a month and how many things you realistically can make a month and therefore how much you're going to get that month. If you spend too long answering emails one month and don't do that much glaze testing, it doesn't affect as long as you're continuing to, to work on the productive part, um, the numbers still make sense. Um, I think that's more or less it for trying to think if there were any other questions that came up on Instagram that, I, that aren't explained so well in the blog. I think that's basically it. Obviously, this is one quite basic way of working out a price and it's it's not the price you should charge it's just a starting point definitely is a, a bottom line price if you're taking your your essentially your minimum wage and multiplying it by the maximum number of pieces you can realistically make that's a very good minimum for how much you want to be charging um, how much you multiply that by to cover all the additional costs, like you've got to pay your PayPal fees, if you go to a craft fair, you've got to pay the entrance and the travel and you know all those sorts of things. So this is a minimum that you don't want to go below, you want to be above it. Um, obviously the target amount that you want to like for a comfortable living, you can, that, that sort of builds a bit of a buffer in. So you, you don't necessarily need to know precisely how much you're going to spend on booth fees or PayPal fees a month. If you know that your current running costs for your house, your car and your studio come to £3,000 a month, you kind of know that if you're, if you're charging enough that you can make five or 6000 a month, then you know that you're going to be safe covering all those additional little costs because once you've tracked it for a little while you'll know how much they all add up to. Um, partly this kind of 
comes with time and it, it, it's a bit of a, a fiddly task to work out exactly how long things take you at the start but I do think it's worth doing that once anyway even if you don't do this um, to, for your prices just because knowing that lets you make more sensible business decisions and timing decisions and everything even down to you think I could throw 20 pieces today if you know that the next stage actually takes you an hour for each mug don't throw 20 pieces you know, spread them out over a longer time period simple things like that that you will have an innate sense of once you've done this for a little while but having a, a timed numerical thing is, is handy to have as a reference even if it's not something you need to reference actually that often um, and then certainly these sorts of numbers become more important if you're looking at wholesale um, just because the margins are that much tighter and you kind of it can be quite tempting when you see the numbers written down like if someone wants to order a thousand of something and you think well that's going to be you know x amount of money and that's it that number will be a huge amount of money um, you kind of discount in your head just how long it takes to make a thousand of something uh, I've done this I had an order for a couple of hundred I think, it was, I think it was 200 it might have been 250 tumblers just little tumblers the little tumblers are really quick to throw they're really quick to trim had the whole process set so that it, they were a piece that I could make really quickly 200 of something is a lot of some things you know it might actually have been 250 because it worked out at every minute that I added to any process was four hours of time. So I, you kind of budget on throwing them in a minute and a half, but actually if that's two minutes, that's an additional two hours of time. And it's like that for every single thing. So it's worth having those kind of timings and pricings in mind when you're looking at something that scales up because the little differences make a big difference when you scale up and it can be the difference between get, having a wholesale order that really was worth doing and having a wholesale order you regret for the next month. Um, so I'll link to everything in um, yeah, link to everything in the description. I'll put the slides up after this in case you want to read what I put on Instagram just because I made them a sort of an infographic thing. So. Um, some people might have clicked to jump to, through to that because I'll put a link in for that in the description. But if this makes sense to you and you want to kind of see more precisely what I'm talking about, um, go and check out the spreadsheet because that will save you a bunch of time. And if you're going to do it for more than one or two pieces, I'd recommend using the spreadsheet just because it will do the calculations for you. It's easy when they're round numbers like I used here obviously gets a bit more fiddly when they're not round numbers and if you're doing it for a bunch of things you might as well just use the spreadsheet um, I did it to save me time and so hopefully it will save you time too um, and that's it really if you've got any questions stick them below hopefully I explained most of the obvious things and the spreadsheet and blog post will explain a few others uh, just because one person commented about it on reddit the tabs to move around the spreadsheet are at the bottom if you're unfamiliar with google sheets so different bits of information are shown on different tabs and they're at the bottom. I know most of you will know that, but if it's not something you use regularly, uh, that will save you hunting around to find them. But yeah, let me know if you have any other questions and I'll do my best to answer them.